I'm Peter Edwards from the University of Bristol, and this is a summary presentation of a research article published in the British Journal of General Practice reporting how GPs give safety netting advice in routine primary care consultations. Safety netting advice is information shared with a patient or their carer designed to help them identify the need to seek further medical help if their condition fails to improve, changes, or if they have further concerns about their health. Previous research has reported that GPs provide safety netting advice intuitively in some circumstances, but it is not known to what extent this occurs in routine adult consultations. In this study, we applied a new safety netting coding tool to the one in a million primary care consultations archive, which contains video and audio recordings of 318 GP patient consultations with 23 GPs working across 12 practices. We observed safety netting advice being delivered in just under two thirds of all consultations and for just under half of all problems discussed. Neurological problems were most frequently issued safety netting advice, whereas urological problems had the least advice. On an individual GP level, the rate of safety netting advice per problem ranged from as much as almost nine out of every 10 problems seen to two out of every 10 problems seen. The mean average across the 23 GPs was 46.9% of all problems seen. We found that the vast majority of cases, the doctors initiated the safety netting advice, but there were a few occasions where patients asked what they should look out for. Most advice was delivered during the treatment planning and closing phases of the consultation, and it was rare that patients asked any questions about the advice, and even more rare that the doctors issued any written advice. We classified episodes of safety netting advice into two categories, generic and specific. In brief, generic advice included symptoms such as your condition gets worse, you feel more unwell, or asking patients to seek help if their symptoms did not get better, but without giving them a set time period. By contrast, the advice was coded as specific if a doctor gave them a set time period when they should return if their symptoms had not resolved, or mentioned a new specific symptom, such as the wound becomes red and swollen. Across all 390 episodes of safety netting advice, we found a near 50-50 split between specific and generic advice, but we found that doctors tended to give more specific advice during the treatment planning phase of the consultation compared to more generic advice during the closing phase. The most common categories of symptoms patients were told to look out for were a new specific symptom or condition, for example you start to cough up any blood, if their current illness or symptoms did not get better, or if their condition generally got worse. We found it was rare that GPs were directing patients to emergency or out of hours services, and in over 90% of cases, GPs suggested that the patient either return directly to them or to the practice in general. We found that acute problems, such as an acute exacerbation of asthma, compared to chronic problems, such as a general review of asthma, were more likely to be given safety netting advice. Problems assessed by the doctor first in the consultation. And problems assessed by the younger cohort of GPs in our study were more likely to issue safety netting advice. We did not find any associations between patient age, sex, ethnicity or deprivation quintile. Most patients in the study gave us consent to look in their medical notes, and we found that for less than half of problems where doctors gave safety netting advice, there was documented evidence of this advice in the notes. The main limitations of our study are that patients and doctors knew that they were being recorded, and this might have changed their interactions. We found that chronic problems were less likely to be given safety nursing advice than acute problems, but we could not tell if the patient had been previously given extensive safety nursing advice for that chronic problem in a previous consultation. And finally, this was a study of only 23 GPs in the west of England, and their practice might not be reflective of the whole UK, let alone the rest of the world. So to finish, I'd just like to highlight some points of discussion and reflection. If you're a patient who has recently seen your GP, did you leave the consultation knowing what to do if things didn't go according to plan? Was the advice you were given clear? For doctors and other allied healthcare professionals, do you routinely give safety netting advice? Do you think the advice that you give is clear? And do you find time to document that advice in the medical notes? Finally, as our study showed a lower frequency of safety netting advice for problems assessed later in the consultation, and we know from previous research that consultation duration only tends to increase by two minutes per additional problem raised, can and should GPs be expected to safely assess more than one problem in a single 10 to 15 minute consultation? I'd love to hear your opinions and suggestions for future research, and my contact details are at the start of this presentation. And that's it. 
I'd just like to say thank you to everyone who supported me in this project, including my co-authors Becky Barnes, Matt Ridd and Emily Saunderson, everyone from the Elizabeth Blackwell Institute for Health Research, who along with the Avon Primary Care Research Collaborative and Wellcome Trust funded this project. BJGP for publishing the article and Debbie Sharp for her support and guidance. And most importantly, all the patients and doctors who participated in the original One in a Million study, as without them, none of this would be possible. Thanks to Pixabay for royalty-free images and to you for listening to me.